afternoon, everyone. Thank you to the AAUW for allowing me to uh, comment on this uh, wonderful event. Um, I bring a new voice, which is the name um, or the theme of today's event, in that I ask you to or stimulate you to think about pay equity from a unique perspective from that mo mostly of health. And let me fiddle around here just a little bit. Um, we used a, um, I represent the Wayne County Department of Public Health, which is a local public health agency, one that probably would not even examine um, pay equity and its impacts, and also a partner organization, Human Impact Partners, headquartered in uh, Oakland, California, which is the only organization in the United States that is striving to have health impact, bring health to all decision making. So a health impact assessment is a unique methodology that's used to examine policy, but not health policy, all other policy and the impact that it may have on a person's health. I won't bore you with our statistics here in Michigan, but only add to what the previous panels have, panelists have uh, described in that there is a gap. There is an inequity. Um, our incomes are not the average women, in, uh, I'm sorry, the average income for women in Michigan does not equal men. The pay gap that you've been hearing about, though, has ramifications far beyond finance. They do indeed impact health, especially premature mortality, uh, decreased longevity for women. There are direct correlations between income and stress. Income-related stress negatively impacts parenting behaviors, and stress in lower-income women, especially minorities, leads directly to or can be linked to poor maternal and child health outcomes including high incidences of infant mortality. In Michigan, 32% of women are single mothers. Single families uh, make up about 42.7% of families in poverty. 41.2% of Michigan women are the primary breadwinner for their family. And we've determined that women are primarily responsible for health for their families. We compared, uh, like our previous panelists, 10 common occupations and found that in those occupations, including nurses, school teachers, janitors, the pay gap was very but significantly different. We determined by our methodology that if equal pay policies are implemented, it would directly result in healthier women, children, and families. That there would be a decrease in mental health disorders like depression and anxiety by significant rates, and that women would more importantly have access to health care insurance. And in Michigan, uh, women are often in the poverty level considered to be the working poor and have to make choices between basic needs and paying money for health care costs. The basic needs tend to uh, win out. People are going to eat and pay their utilities before they're going to use preventative health care or pay for much needed health care. We recommend, and the whole purpose of a health impact assessment is to provide recommendations to decision makers, hopefully to shape policy decisions and discourse of those policies, and make health impacts more explicit and highlight disparities. We recommend that pe people continue to advocate for important policies like pay equity. We also highlight that more research is needed in this area. As we did our assessment, which is usually based on existing evidence, we found that there is a huge lack of information available to document or support. So we have presented our, I'm sorry, our preliminary findings and will continue to research the social determinants of health related to income, nutrition, housing, and transportation. I, like Dr. John, have brought a fact sheet that's available to you in the back. If anyone has more inf needs and more information, my contact information and that of my partners at humanimpact.org is available on the fact sheet. 
and I look forward to talking to you as we enter our question and answer session. Thank you.